early contests build momentum for 2024 contenders seeking the White House. C-SPAN offers unfiltered coverage of events leading into early primaries and caucuses. Get access to speeches and results with the free app. C-SPAN now or watch live on the C-SPAN networks. Get the home field advantage every time with Fairfield by Marriott, official hotel partner of the NCAA. Whether you're a student athlete working toward your championship dreams or your team's biggest fan, Fairfield by Marriott has everything you need to get ready for game day. From comfortable guest rooms to complimentary hot breakfast, Fairfield is part of the Marriott Bonvoy portfolio of hotels and official hotel partner of the NCAA. Visit fairfield.marriott.com to book your next game day stay. High Five Casino. Social casino fun with real prizes and big Vegas hits. Have you had your High Five moment today? Hey there, I'm Bob. Before High Five Casino, my high fives were more like low threes. But after my High Five moment, boom, high fives all around. That's the spirit. High Five Casino is turning every moment into a high five moment. Visit h5c.fun. That's h, the number five, c, dot f-u-n. And start spinning and winning today. High Five Casino. High Five Casino is a social casino only. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Play responsible. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Why don't more infant formula companies use organic, grass-fed whole milk instead of skim? Why don't more infant formula companies use the latest breast milk science? Why don't more infant formula companies run their own clinical trials? Why don't more infant formula companies use more of the proteins found in breast milk? Why don't more infant formula companies have their own factories instead of outsourcing their manufacturing? We wondered the same thing. So we made Byheart, an infant formula company on a mission to get a lot closer to the most super, super food on the planet, breast milk. Our patented protein blend has more of the important and most abundant proteins actually found in breast milk. We're the first and only U.S.-made formula to use organic, grass-fed whole milk, not skim. We even conducted the largest clinical trial by a new infant formula company in a quarter century with clinically proven benefits like easier digestion, less spit-up, and softer poops versus a leading infant formula. And we make our own formula in the USA and our very own factories in Iowa, Oregon, and Pennsylvania. Byheart, a better formula for formula. Learn more at byheart.com. Welcome to On the Verge. This is Zach Spedden, joined as always by Bob Phelan and Nick Stevens. And on tonight's episode, we're going to preview the offseason with our annual offseason prediction show. And we're going to pre take a guess not only what moves the Orioles might make, we're going to talk about some off-the-field stuff as well and get into major awards. And to help us do that tonight is our guest. He is the host of Locked On Orioles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, multi-time guest here on On the Verge. He is Connor Newcomb. Connor, how's it going? It's going great. Thank you guys once again uh, for having me back to the uh, back to virtually on the pod after last time being in person, uh, but always fun to be on the show. Yeah, always good to have you here, especially for these episodes, which we have a lot of fun doing where we take our best crack at trying to guess what the Orioles are going to do. But as we do it at the beginning of every prediction show, we go back and we look at the predictions we did the last time we did a prediction show. And we recap them. And Bob went back, listened to that episode, jotted down a bunch of notes, and is now ready to read them off for us. That's right. Um, It was an adventure listening back. There was, you know, some surprisingly good predictions and some maybe not so surprisingly bad predictions. But um, always fun to go back, even though it's only a few months, usually just to see uh, how different our headspace was back then. But one place where it was uh, our head was on it. It, the shoulders pretty strongly was will gunner henderson win rookie of the year and we all said yes i was pretty specific i said he would bat 275 with 25 to 30 home runs 20 stolen bases and good defense didn't quite reach those heights but fairly close so good on us there we all predicted the orioles record and let's just say we're all a bunch of negative nellies after <laughs> winning 101 games how could we not see it coming um, I said we would go 88 and 74 and make the wild card. Zach said 86 and 76 with a wild card berth and a first round loss to the Cleveland Guardians. Uh, Nick said 85 and 77 with a wild card wild card berth. That sounds like the last wild card to me. And then Connor said 83 and 79, a repeat of the 2022. Oh, thanks, Simkin. Um, uh, record and missing the playoffs, but I'm sure you're happy that we we bucked those predictions, right? Right, Connor? Yeah, it was only 18 wins off, so it's you know in the grand scheme of a 162 game season, you know, it's not that far off. Yeah, only like almost one a week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what pitcher will lead the Orioles in strikeouts? We all said Kyle Bradish. I think we were all correct there. 
Felix Bautista probably had an argument before the injury. Who will lead the Orioles in home runs? Nick said Ryan Mountcastle. He was all aboard the Ryan Mountcastle train on the uh, preseason predictions. Maybe if it wasn't for some vertigo, you would have had a shot. But we, me and Zach both said Anthony Santander with 34 home runs. Uh, Connor said Gunnar Henderson with 32 home runs. And I have to pull up the, the stats to see exactly who was correct here. It was Santander and Henderson tied with 28 in reality. So I say we all win there, except for Nick. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, gold gloves. We don't know who's going to win any of these gold gloves, but we at least know the finalists. Zach said Adley Rutschman and Cedric Mullins. I said Adley Rutschman and Gunnar Henderson. Connor and Nick both said only Adley Rutschman. So Adley... He's at least in contention. We'll see what happens. Next was who out of Jordan Westberg, Connor Norby, Joey Ortiz, who will debut first in 2023 and who will not debut? Zach said Westberg first, but everyone will debut. Connor said Ortiz first, then Westberg, no Norby. Nick said Westberg first, but then he's traded before the deadline. And I said Westberg first, then Ortiz, no Norby. Was Connor right there? Yeah, I'll take the I'll take the W on that one. That's a big win for me right there. Just just don't read any more predictions out. <laughs> He'd like to thank Ramon Arias's thumb, I believe. <laughs> yeah. Or wrist or whatever it was. When will Connor uh, Connor Colton Kowser debut? I said July or August around the trade deadline, a little before or a little after. Nick said after the trade deadline, and Zach and Connor both said September first. What was it like August something? Yeah, and late, it wasn't for July, very long. Early late August. July? No, I'll take a win where I can get it. Same question for Heston Kerstad, and we all said early 2024. So, I mean, that was a pretty pretty tough one to predict that he would sneak in there with an excellent season uh, at the end of 2023. How high will Jackson Holiday get in 2023? Congrats to Nick, who said all the way up to AAA. He didn't say that he would, you know, there'd be people begging for him to make his major league debut. You know, can't can't win them all. We all said AA would be the highest level he would reach. Will Grayson Rodriguez be top three in Rookie of the Year? I was the only one that said yes. I said third. He'll have 150 strikeouts in 110 innings pitched. I don't know why I got that, sp that specific, but... He did have a 129 strikeouts in 122 innings pitch, so not too far off, but I doubt that he'll be top three in the Rookie of the Year voting. All-Stars, Orioles All-Stars, I predicted five. Adley Rutschman, Gunnar Henderson, Ryan Mountcastle, Cedric Mullins, and Felix Bautista. Zach predicted three. Gunnar Henderson, Adley, or four. Gunnar Henderson, Adley Rutschman, Felix Bautista, and Cedric Mullins. Nick predicted Adley Rutschman and Felix Bautista. Connor said Adley Rutschman and Kyle Bradish. I think Nick wins that round. Most pleasant surprise, Zach said Sionel Perez with a lot of people expecting him to, to fall back after an excellent 2022, which he did, but then he did kind of become a pleasant surprise towards the end of the year. So not sure how to grade that one. Connor said Kyle Gibson. A lot of people were not the happiest that he was our, our biggest pitching move in the offseason, but Connor said he would be a better version of Jordan Lowes, and I think he was. I said Kyle Stowers, so we will move on there. And Nick said Austin Hayes, so I think uh, he nailed that. He also said Austin Hayes, jokingly for biggest disappointment, but ultimately went with Ramon <laughs> Arias, which I think the case could be made that that's an accurate statement. Uh, for biggest disappointment, I said a combination of Jorge Mateo and Austin Hayes. Zach said a combination of Michael Givens and Dylan Tate. So ding, ding, ding. And Connor said Austin Voth, correct. And Tyler Wells, maybe depends how you look at it, but not a terrible guess. Biggest Twitter blow up, where I think it was actually biggest Twitter civil war uh, on the episode. Well, we had a lot, of, a lot of fun with this one. I said trade deadline disappointment. Connor said three different things. Grayson Rodriguez, where is he? When will he be? Et cetera, et cetera. Brandon Hyde in his punt lineups. Uh, and Adam Frazier slash Jordan Westberg 
Why is Adam Frazier here? Why isn't Jordan Westbrook here? Fair enough. Zach said, bring up the infield prospects slash Adam Frazier. And Nick said, bring Colton Kowser up. But you forgot, once they did bring him up, send Colton Kowser down. Bold pitching prediction. Connor had Kyle Bradish slam dunk 2024 opening day starter. Congrats. <laughs> Nailed Don't it. Read all the Kyle oh. Bradish. <laughs> Don't read mine. I'm about to. <laughs> Nick said Cole Irvin will have a similar war to Kyle Bradish. He didn't say, you know, Cole Irvin career versus Kyle Bradish 2023. No, uh, you know, uh, Cole Irvin, the, 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 the book isn't closed with what he could be for the Orioles. But yeah, 2023, he did not come close to Kyle Bradish's war. Um, I said Tyler Wells would stick in the rotation all season. Didn't see him fading again for the second year in a row. And Zach said, Mike Bauman will be one of the best relievers on the Orioles, which yeah, if you think wins are a good uh, stat, pretty yeah, accurate. He had his moments. Yeah, definitely had his moments. Probably should have been uh, on the postseason roster ahead of Brian Baker. We can we could say that. Bold hitter prediction. Nick with a good one here. Gunner, 30 home runs, almost. 20 stolen bases, half of that, and a – Less than 25% K rate. Didn't reach those heights again, as stated earlier, but he did have an excellent season. Connor said, Cedric Mullins will have a better war than 2021, a six-plus war, and get a contract extension. Darn injuries. Yeah. He, he was on pace before the first injury, those first two months for a better season, but that was also two months. So Yeah, yeah, that that's a... The tough one. No one saw him getting injured. I said Adam Frazier would hit over 300 with a 350 on base. Not a good prediction. And Zach said Kyle Stowers will hit more than 20 home runs in the major leagues. Dan Connolly still thinks he's on pace for that, but unfortunately not to be. We each predicted the AL East order. I mean, this is just going to be a bunch of... We all had Red Sox in the last... Um, me, Zach, and Nick had the Rays in second to last. We also all had the Blue Jays winning division. Connor had the Rays winning the division, Yankees second, then the Blue Jays, then the Orioles. I had the Orioles second, then the Yankees. Nick had and Zach both had Yankees, then Orioles. Bold Major League Baseball prediction, <laughs> Nick. I'm going to read yours. Sorry. Uh, the White I'm, Sox will, will have a great season. I'm going to take a dig at that later in the episode again. So go. Ahead. <laughs> All right. Connor said Angels will finally make the playoffs with Mike Trout and Shohei Otani and win a wild card series. Hey, it's bold. We got to be bold. <laughs> I said everyone loves the pitch clock by the end of the year. That seems probably not as bold as I thought it was at the time. And no Dodgers in the playoffs. They did make the playoffs, but they lost early. So if I could take any credit. Uh, Zach said, Phillies will miss the playoffs. They weren't that far off. And the White Sox will be sellers at the trade deadline. That was a good call. And let's see. We had a bunch of over-unders here. Uh, for Gunner, 3.1 war. I said double. Everyone else said over. What was it ultimately? I don't have the numbers. In front I of me. should have had. We can probably just skip. We can probably just skip those. There's a lot of those. Yeah, there is. As let's see, any? I'm just trying to quickly see if there's any interesting ones. Colton Kowser games played was 26, and he played in 26. 26. Games. So that was <laughs> that was a good over under there. Well done. Van Graffs or whoever it was. Uh, let's see. Kyle Gibson, 172 innings pitched. That seemed like it would be a close one. He was over. He was over with 192. Kramer had 172. I think we we all pretty much took the optimistic over-unders here. So we'll get to the last one. World Series predictions. Nobody's looking good here. Connor had Padres over Mariners. Zach had Mariners over Braves. Nick again, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mariners over Cardinals. And I had the Padres over the Orioles. At least I was a homer, but no, we were no one had Rangers over Diamondbacks for some reason before the season started. What were we thinking? At least Zach and Bob, you guys had teams in there that actually made the playoffs. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
By the way, Gunnar Henderson's <laughs> war, uh, F war was 4.6 this year. Don't, not double. I would have liked that. Yeah, because du- double would be like a historically great rookie season. <laughs> and I, I tell myself this every time we have a prediction. So less time be next time be less specific. And I know tonight I'm going to fall into some trap anyways. Oh, see, I like being more specific because then it's like funny if you get it wrong and you look like a genius if you get it right. So, Nick, where, where are you mentally? How have you been preparing for this? <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked. Um, so we're going to do predictions here. We're going to start this in a moment. But uh, I, well, I would not take any of my predictions and run to a sports book, although there is one that Bob did take one of my predictions last year, ran to a sports book and won some cash, I believe, if I remember correctly. But uh, I do have one prediction that I can guarantee you, and it's a magic prediction, if you will. And you're going to be working tomorrow at around 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. You're going to hit a wall. And maybe that afternoon coffee or treat gives you just enough energy to wrap up the work day. But if you're like me, that artificial buzz is going to wear off pretty quickly. And the craziness that evenings bring with you know kids at home requires, those kids require almost superhuman like mental strength. My prediction is uh, Magic Mind is going to give you not just the energy you need for a full day, but also give you the peace of mind that you aren't consuming harmful chemicals or processed garbage. I've been drinking these small magic mind shots each morning before my morning cup of coffee. And I can tell you from personal experience that these drinks do work. To be completely honest, I was skeptical. I was not expecting anything, but that afternoon drag is pretty much gone since I started drinking magic mind each morning. Haven't gone for the afternoon coffee in almost two weeks now. I'm really drinking less coffee overall. I feel awake in the afternoons and overall just feel more refreshed and energized throughout the day. I really put it to test this weekend and we were talking about this before we came on air, but uh, it was homecoming at my alma mater. Shout out JMU, now the 23rd ranked team in uh, college football. Uh, so after a day of drinking and an 8 p.m. kickoff, someone my age, that is a recipe for disaster. And on Sunday, now that I'm hungover and dragging and my kids come home from a weekend at the grandparents' house, if you are a fellow parent, you understand that the chaos that brings I knew that my Monday was going to be brutal, but I have to say I felt great. I crushed my to-do list. And honestly, I give a huge props to Magic Mind for that. The best part about Magic Mind is I really do look forward to drinking these every day. Made of all natural ingredients, including matcha, lion's mane mushrooms, ingredients designed to improve your memory, give you that natural energy boost and stress less. No sugar, nut-free, vegan, keto, and paleo-friendly as well. Um, Trust me, if I'm sitting here telling you it's good, believe me, because if you hand me a bottle of something green and tell me it's healthy, I should drink it. I'm not touching it. But Magic Mind honestly changed my mind about that. You can try Magic Mind for yourself. Go to magicmind.com slash verge. It's magicmind.com slash verge, V-E-R-G-E. Use our code verge20, that's number 20, and you can save 56% on a subscription to Magic Mind or get 20% off a one-time order. If you're already a subscriber, you can still go to magicmind.com slash verge, use our code and get a discount on your next subscription. Really running this because I personally stand by the product. I use it. My wife is now hooked. She signed up for a subscription. So that monthly subscription automatically comes to her house every 30 days. It is awesome. Something else that is really cool with this product, Magic Mind does come with a 100% money back guarantee. No questions asked. So there's no risk whatsoever. Give it a try today. Start feeling refreshed immediately. Go to magicmind.com slash verge. Use our discount code verge20 for up to 56% off a subscription. I'd get the 30 pack. It's what me and my wife subscribe to. It's great value, great product. We'll put the link in the uh, show notes, our direct link, and go order you some today and let us know what you think. Don't forget, you can sign up for the On The Verge Patreon. We have ad-free episodes and access to the WhatsApp group. Just an unrelated thing I forgot to mention earlier. And with that, now that we're all uh, focused here and ready to go with our predictions, I'm going to read off the first one, which is probably the biggest point of speculation for the Orioles offseason so far. Will Anthony Santander, who's entering his contract here, be traded this offseason? I'm going to let Connor start this one. My hope is no. Um, I think this move whether it's made or not, is going to tell us an unbelievable amount about how John Angelos and Mike Elias plan to move forward with this team. Um, This is a move with a guy who's going to be due about $13 million, who is becoming a free agent, who is somewhat limited in what he can do, at least defensively, and how versatile he can be. And with guys like Heston Kerstad and Colton Kowser coming behind him, if they make this move, this signals we are trying to be the Rays and the Guardians. If they don't make this move, it doesn't mean they're not trying to do that, but it just means we're holding on a little bit longer. I'm going to say no, and I'm going to say no, because not for a lack of trying, but I think they just might not find the right trade partner. 
Yes, I, I hope not. I said last week, I'm honestly kind of tired of hearing fans eagerly push him out the door and trade him so quickly. I want that bat in the lineup next year. I think that's a great point by Connor. I was thinking that too, that if they do trade San Sander and decide that they don't want to pay a middle of the order bat in this lineup, uh, th- that amount of money, then that's when I do start to get a little bit concerned about what the future is. Um, I know he has the defensive limitations and all of that. And there are some big bats coming up in the system as well, but I, I say no, I hope not. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think his value on the trade block is going to be as valuable as he is to the 2024 Orioles. Yeah. It's a hefty price tag for the, it shouldn't be, shouldn't even be a consideration, but I, I understand just because he's, he's going to make more than double digit millions that uh, he might need to go according to John Angelus. But I, I think he's just the perfect candidate to spend his contract year the in Baltimore, finish the entire year, get a qualifying offer. He'll either accept it and come back for one more year or decline it. And the Orioles will get the coveted draft pick for uh, letting him go when he signs with someone else. So I do not think he's traded. I wouldn't be shocked if he was, but I think it would take, you know, we, we know Michael Elias likes to win trades as we all do. So if, if someone offers him a good enough deal, I could see it. I just don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, I fully agree with Bob. I don't think it's going to happen for that exact reason, which is that the value he's going to bring back in a trade is not going to offset or come close to the value of keeping him around for one year to let him have another 25, 30 homer season with about three wins above a replacement. I also think it's kind of telling that we didn't see a lot of Heston Kerstad in the outfield. And I have to think that if the Orioles felt like Kerstad was going to be their right fielder next year, they would have used him in the field more down the stretch, but they didn't. And while defense is not Santander's strength, they know what they have there. So I think he's back next year. And I just think, like, I don't know. I th- I think they're going to probably play more of the prospects slash young players next year. And I think if you keep Santander, that's one less spot that you might have to do that or – you know, I don't know. It's it's weird. It's going to be interesting to see how much they rely on the youth next year, just because it seemed they were very reluctant to this year. But I feel like the level of prospects that could debut next year might make it a little more uh, swallowable, if that's a word. We will find out. In the meantime, uh, will any Orioles win a major award, Rookie of the Year, MVP, Cy Young, etc. next year? We'll start with Zach on this one. Brandon Hyde will win manager of the year. Uh, Gunnar Henderson will win rookie of the year. And Mike Elias will win executive of the year. Yeah, that's the trifecta, right? Brandon Hyde for manager, rookie of the year. Gunnar, executive of the year. Mike Elias, I know, was it sporting news that they just did that? They won all three of those categories. So I see it happening in the official voting as well. Yeah, those are probably the, the pretty easy ones. And they will all most likely uh, win those awards. I could see Elias maybe not winning, but I feel like the manager of the year is so much based on just how much did you outperform expectations. And when the Orioles were predicted to take a step back and they win 101 games, you just you, you hand that guy the award every time it happens. Indeed. And what about Cy Young? Where will Kyle Bradish finish in AL Cy Young voting? Had a phenomenal year. Will it be top 10, top 5, top 3? What do you think, uh, Connor? You are the the Kyle Bradish bandwagon leader. What do you think? Fifth. Um, I don't really know who exactly finishes ahead of him. It seems like this is probably Garrett Cole's year to finally win. Um, but I would say probably fifth. I think there's some people that are like really Bradish heads and give him like a second or third place vote. And there's other people who have never heard of Kyle Bradish because they cover their team and they only see the other teams when they come into town. Um, so I think he'll settle somewhere around fifth. Yeah, I just said top five, but I mean, regardless, he answered a lot of questions this year. It was kind of coming into the year. I kind of felt like, are we going to see first half Kyle Bradish? Are we going to see second half Kyle Bradish? Are we going to see some mixture of the two? And, uh, I think he definitely exceeded my expectations. Almost a four war year. You know, some people throwing around the term ace, regardless, this is a guy who's kind of cemented his place at or near the top of this rotation for hopefully a good bit to come. I'm going to go a little bold here and go third. Um, I think that there is going to be some value to one being the best pitcher on the best team in the league. 
having a sub three ERA when the first Oriole to do that since 1992 and doing it in the American League East. Uh, so I think voters are going to kind of give him some nods there. He's not going to win the award. I think Connor's right. It's Garrett Cole's year. But I think Braddis is going to do pretty well for himself in voting. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would have said top three if he didn't get hit by a line drive in his first start of the season. But I'll say top five uh, since he did. All right. I can go to the next one here. It's first really, truly interesting, debatable one. And that's uh, non-tender looking ahead to this offseason. Do the Orioles non-tender anybody? Connor, any guesses? Yeah, I mean, they've got 16 ARB eligible guys, which I believe is second in baseball, if not maybe tied for first. Um, it's kind of an insane number, although not a lot of those guys are like at the back end of arbitration. It's a lot of, a lot of young guys hitting ARB for the first year or being ARB2 guys this year. Um, a couple of guys that stand out are like McKenna and Keegan Aiken, but I almost think those guys are going to be so cheap. They're going to be due around like $800,000 each that those are guys who maybe don't non-tender at first but then if you want to get rid of them you just dfa them later in the offseason like they're not so much money where because you know mckenna still could have value aiken probably not but maybe if he's healthy could still have value so i could see them holding on to those guys um briefly and then dfaing them eventually here's a guy who i could see it happening to dylan tate is due 1.5 million next year I don't know what's going on with Dylan Tate. Nobody knows what's going on with Dylan Tate. You could see a non-tender and re-sign to a minor league deal because I am very worried about his long-term health right now of his arm. Yeah, I had that written down. You know, if if they tender him a contract, I think it's a great sign that he'll be ready to pitch in 2024. And obviously, if they non-tender him, it's probably not a good sign for for his health in the next year or so. I also have Keegan Aiken definite non-tender candidate i mean i think he's like one of the lowest people in the 40 man anyway so i think he would be dfa'd at some point mckenna i could see what you're talking about connor where it's like yeah we'll keep him around for now if we find a better option we can always get rid of him down the road or try to pass him through waivers and i think jorge mateo is going to be non-tendered i think he's three million dollars is not a lot of money in Major League Baseball, but it is the Orioles. And I do think he is not going to be in the long-term plans for this team anymore. If they, I think they'll try to find a trade partner, but I think teams will probably read that and let him be non-tendered before he signs elsewhere this offseason. I'm going to say that Keegan Aiken is non-tendered. I do agree with Connor that you know that price tag, let's say he gets roughly 800000 is not very much, and you could DFA him later, but I think the Orioles are going to want to clear that spot sooner. So they're going to go ahead and make the obvious move. Dylan Tate will either be non-tendered or he will sign like a maybe $700,000 base salary with some incentives thrown in based on health. He's definitely not getting one and a half million. Uh, I don't think any team in baseball would give him a million and a half given his injury status and the fact that he's a pitcher with a long injury history before this so i uh, i hope he's back i hope he's healthy but he's not getting one and a half million yeah i said mckenna um although you guys do make a uh, compelling arguments there as to why he probably would not uh, i also thought about kicking aiken but i think i don't have it pulled up again correct me if i'm wrong i think he saw as an option so i'm almost wondering if he's been around the org for long enough uh maybe they say we'll give you close to a million dollars just sit in triple a uh, as an emergency option um if i'm wrong about that option then disregard you can dfa him I mean, you can hell DFA of an emergency. <laughs> and you can dfa him regardless but just thinking like the orioles there um i'm gonna throw out another name i don't think it happens but I guess McKenna and Aiken would be my two like definite answers but I'll throw out another name that I could see a path for this happening Again, I don't think it will, but could Austin Hayes be in danger of being non-tendered? I, I think it's a very small chance, but like I know the payroll is extremely small as well, and they can pay whoever, whatever. But do you think the Orioles would pay, was it six, seven million dollar estimate uh, salary for Hayes if there are better, cheaper options out there, maybe more consistent bats, and you can't find a trade partner for Hayes? Um, I don't know. Yeah. 
I think for Hayes, if you really are willing to just give him up for nothing, you could find a trade partner that probably doesn't bring back much, but brings back something just because he was yeah. a valuable player at, at times this year. Um, I think he was probably more in non-tender danger last offseason uh, when he was just a disaster down the stretch. And that was kind of more of a conversation surrounding him. Um, the only other name I'll throw out is Jacob Webb, potentially um, do 1.2 million and... It's just kind of like, uh, eh, if the O's don't see it anymore, they could make that move. I just feel like Austin Hayes, you got to be able to find a trade partner if you really are that desperate to not pay him that salary. Maybe you just call teams bluff if they don't want to trade for him before you have to tender him. But I, I, I guess I could see the world where that happens, but I think it's very slim chance. Yeah, I think it's slim too. Um, Hayes is one of those players where I can, there are certain data points that I can look at and say that I think he'd actually be a better player outside of Baltimore. Um, different outfield to play in, different, you know, ballpark dimensions, potentially hit for more power somewhere else. So it is possible that if the Orioles are shopping Austin Hayes, they can convince a team, whoever it is, hey, you put this guy in right field in your smaller ballpark that's better for right handed hitters, he'll hit 20 home runs next year which I don't see him doing at Camden Yards, but could he do that in, you know, Cincinnati? Absolutely. So I'll go to the next prediction here. Will Jorge Mateo and or Ramon Urias be traded? Bob has kind of weighed in on this already, but I want him to elaborate a little bit more. So I'll start with him. Yeah, um, I think they will try to trade both of them uh, this offseason. I think... If you can't, like I said, if you can't find a trade partner for Jorge Mateo, I think he could and maybe will be non tendered for Arias. If they don't find a trade partner, I think he'll be back because he's very valuable at this point, maybe more valuable to the Orioles. Uh, we'll see. But I, I feel like the Connor Norbys, the Joey Ortizes of the world are going to maybe make him a little irrelevant as well. But, you know, he's still got what, three years of team control left. I don't know. He can play third, second really well, first base in a pinch, shortstop in a very uh, real pinch. Um, I'll say ultimately he is traded in a package with some prospects for something of, of, of pitching um, at some point. We'll see. Yeah, I said maybe, yeah, the kind of guys you could maybe beef up a trade package with, I could see if you're making a deal with the right organization. But I honestly kind of felt like Ramon Arias, maybe he sticks around, but next year, maybe early next season, you know, some team gets hit with a big injury uh, and they need infield help. Maybe they come calling for Ramon Arias. And at that time, you know, especially if you're keeping someone like Jackson Holiday down in AAA for the first couple of weeks, by then Holiday's ready to make the jump. You, you've got some other guys that you, you're ready to, bring up and uh, maybe then Arias and you get a little bit more for him. I don't know. He could be a throw in, but I kind of see him being dealt potentially even one for one for like a relief type swing man type kind of Cole Irvin style pitcher um, who the O's want to bring in just to have that guy who they say, Hey, we're going to put him in the bullpen, but he could start for us if we needed to. Yeah, I agree with Connor. I think that Arias is going to be traded. It's not, I don't know that he's going to really make a package more enticing necessarily if you're going after a bigger name guy, but I do think he can be moved to get you bullpen help. Mateo is where I'm the most conflicted because I could see him getting non tendered. I could see him being traded, but I could also see him back next year because he can play shortstop. His speed is an undeniable game changer. Um, and if you don't have to rely on the bat as much, Maybe there's a utility role that works for him. Um, the Orioles might believe that $3 million is too expensive for that kind of player, in which case he's definitely gone this offseason in some way, shape, or form. But I'm not as convinced that Mateo is going to be traded as I am Arias. Get the home field advantage every time with Fairfield by Marriott, official hotel partner of the NCAA. Whether you're a student athlete working toward your championship dreams or your team's biggest fan, Fairfield by Marriott has everything you need to get ready for game day. From comfortable guest rooms to complimentary hot breakfast, Fairfield is part of the Marriott Bonvoy portfolio of hotels and official hotel partner of the NCAA. Visit fairfield.marriott.com to book your next game day stay. 
I mean, regardless, Mateo, I, I have my issues with him. I did see the positives. I think I mentioned on the show, uh, come playoff time, that felt like you definitely see the value Mateo brings now, but can we sit with him for a whole nother season? Uh, but regardless, I mean, we had, what's his name, from uh, Baseball America and Kyle Glazer on this show saying that Jorge Mateo was nothing, and the Orioles did get some value out of him. So just a quick shout-out, little shout-out there to Mateo. All right, let's see. Will the Orioles retain any of their free agents? For reference, those would be Adam Fraser, Kyle Gibson, uh, signed to one-year deals, Fuji and Jack Flaherty, who were trade deadline acquisitions, and Aaron Hicks, who was picked up off the scrap heap after being uh, released by the Yankees. What do we think, Zach? I'm going to say that none of them are back. Um, I think that Flaherty didn't really show a whole lot to entice me to want to bring him back here next year. Aaron Hicks, that was great for a few months, but you've got other outfielders in the system that are going to be better than Aaron Hicks, so you turn over to them. And then as for Gibson, he did exactly what the Orioles wanted him to do, but I wouldn't be surprised if a team is willing to give him a two-year contract. I mean, the Royals were willing to give Jordan Lyles two years after last year. So there's going to be some pitting desperate team that will sign Kyle Gibson like a two-year $18 million deal just to have a body in their rotation. So I don't think he's back. Fuji's the hardest one for me to pinpoint. If he had made the postseason roster, I might say yes. But the fact that they left him off, and I think they were justified in leaving him off, but the fact that they left him off makes me question if they really see any path forward with him. So I'm going to guess for now, no, that he's not back. I'm going to kind of jump off of Vivek's comment right there. The Orioles love Aaron Hicks. Brandon Hyde loves Aaron Hicks. The young Orioles, and I've heard this from multiple people, loved Aaron Hicks. There was a reason why he went through multiple injuries. He came in there. You know, Mullins came back. These guys came back, and he stuck around the entire season. One of those reasons was he was producing better than Cedric Mullins, honestly. But they love Aaron Hicks. And I could, at worst, see Hicks coming back to be kind of a guy who sits there while you make sure Kerstad and Kowser are ready. And he's there, and he can play all three outfield positions, and he provides really, really good leadership in that clubhouse. They love that guy. He seems to be like one of the great guys in baseball. Um, and I just think they are going to want him back, and I think he's going to want to come back because he probably got a second jolt of like his baseball career after what he went through in New York. And I could see it being some sort of situation where by next June, he's kind of off the roster. But he's there as a safety blanket early in the year. I kind of think about it similar to like Alejandro Deaza with the 2014 Orioles added to that team as a veteran outfielder starts in the postseason. They bring him back in 2015 and the magic kind of wears off. He's awful. And by May they had DFA would him off the team. I could see that being something that happens with Aaron Hicks. Cause remember you can just pay him the league minimum. I mean, the Yankees are paying him a whole bunch of money for the next couple of years. So he'll be cheap to bring back. I think he'll be at least in camp with the O's next year. Gibson, I like the point about somebody's going to give him two years. Fuji, if he's willing to be a reliever, I think the O's would try to bring him back. If he still wants to be a starter, the Orioles are not touching that. Yeah, I said Hicks because it would annoy a lot of Orioles fans <laughs> and cause chaos and the financial reasons. He's cheap, uh, so you can bring him back at least for a little bit. Uh, I, Everyone else can kind of go. I'm fine with letting them run free. With Fuji... I could see Fuji coming back because I almost wonder if that trade was made thinking more long-term with Fuji. Uh, like we know he's not going to be the guy that takes this bullpen to the next level or solidifies this bullpen for a world series run in 2023, but we really do like his stuff. It's disgusting. We know the fastball veal is there. Let's just get him in the system. We can work with him this off season and let's see what he has next year. So I could see Fuji coming back. If, if there's already been conversations about like Connor mentioned what his role is going to be. And if there's agreement there, bring him back in, in hopes that that was the plan all along. And we see a, a more refined version of Fuji next season. Yeah. I would love to see what the Orioles could do with the full off season of working with him. I just, and it seemed like he loved it here while he was here. Definitely more than Oakland. Um, I, I want to say that maybe it's just between, signing back with the Orioles or going back to Japan. I don't know. I, it didn't seem like he had the best time. I don't know if Brandon Hyde, if he has a say, he 
Fuji might have drove him a little bit crazy with the the inconsistency. But yeah, Aaron Hicks, I, I think he will be in camp, and I bet you he's like the biggest argument for why Ryan McKenna is a non tender candidate because he's a veteran for league minimum that can play can do Ryan McKenna better than Ryan McKenna can. In in most most cases, maybe not pure speed and uh, hustle, but as far as he's always going to have a good at bat, and he's got a good arm. He can he can stand at any outfield position. So could see Hicks back for sure. All right, looking ahead to Vivek's favorite question. Uh, maybe not specific names yet, Vivek, but <laughs> I just know you got some names ready to go. But do the Orioles take anyone in the Rule Five draft, which is only a couple weeks away now at this point? Uh, Connor, do you think they take anybody, or are we done with that? Yeah, they'll take a pitcher. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to leave it to Vivek to who that could be, but they'll take a pitcher. They they they're probably past the point of taking two guys in the Rule Five draft, uh, but uh, they'll take a pitcher. I agree. <laughs> Why not? Right? You take a picture, a pitcher, a picture of a pitcher, and then you bring them in for spring training. If you caught lightning in a bottle, you find a way to make it work. If not, you send them back. You lose what twenty thousand dollars. It's fine. Oh, yeah, they'll, they'll take someone. They're definitely going to take somebody. I agree that it's probably going to be a pitcher, but I would be surprised if they don't. And honestly, there's no reason not to take somebody. Yep. Take the guy who, if catch lightning in a bottle, he's a low-cost bullpen arm. Great. If not, like you guys said, send them back. Um, we'll have fun diving into all of that, the names as we get into the dredge of the offseason. So we'll go to this now. Who will fill the two pitching coach vacancies? I'll start with Connor here. Uh, I'm going to direct people to Monday's episode of the Locked On Orioles podcast, where I answered that question and 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 uh, hawk for the uh, the listens and the downloads right there. <laughs> but I did give out three names, so you got to do it. You got to do it. <laughs> um, I did listen to that, and it was you should listen to it if you're listening to this and haven't yet. Um, I will say one of those will be Justin Ramsey. Um, I don't know if they're going to want to replace both in house. So I want to say that another veteran outside name, and I think the three mentioned by Connor on that podcast are are great options, but I'll say it's someone that no one expects. Don't know who, that's a cop-out maybe, but you know, if it's 75-year-old Brent Strom, if you can get him away from the Diamondbacks, yeah, sure, why not? But uh, otherwise, I think it's going to just be someone with experience, but not a ton, someone that you know can at least – show uh not like justin ramsey needs to be shown the ropes he's a kind of a genius on his own but just someone with major league experience to break him in there and then uh maybe down the line you can bring up a uh another one of the minor league pitching coaches to to pair with justin ramsey but that's that's my guess yeah i don't have an answer for this one sorry i just i don't know other coaches didn't look into it uh but i will say i it is going to be Justin Ramsey. I think that moves up. And just like we saw with Ryan Fuller come up and you pairing with Matt Borchulte, a guy who had experience in other organizations, you bring that up. Ramsey's already been working with the upper levels, uh, work with some major league guys, work with kind of the upper levels of the minor leagues as well. So he's involved with a lot of the decisions and, and analysis with the draft and everything that I know. Um, I think he'd be an outstanding hire. You pair him with guys like Grayson Rodriguez and some of the younger guys in this rotation who he's worked with and really helped out and, Bam, hopefully that's a winning combination. Yeah, it'll be Justin Ramsey and an external candidate. I don't have a particular name in mind, but it will be someone who's not in the organization currently. But remember, we did drop some actual names on Monday's episode (laughs) of the Locked on Orioles podcast. (laughs) Well, here's a, a nice, easy softball question for you guys. Predict the Orioles free agent signings. <laughs> Nick. <laughs> Hmm, yeah, a real softball. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I was trying to think what the Orioles would do. We know it's not going to be the Aaron Nolas of the world, obviously. I said the biggest possible option, and obviously this is dependent on A, him opting out of the contract, and B, the Orioles willing to spend a decent chunk of change, at least decent chunk of change by Orioles standards. And I said I'd really like to see Eduardo Rodriguez if he opts out. I wanted them to trade for him uh, at the deadline. The lefty arm, he just turned 30, coming off a great year in Detroit. Be interesting to see uh, what his decision is, though. Uh, the other guy, I'm going to throw out one more name uh, as the, the veteran arm that they bring in. And I'll throw out uh, Hyunjin Ryu from Toronto. Lands probably in that $10 million range. He is further removed from Tommy John. He's not going to strike out a lot of guys, but 
He limits walks, limits hard contact, keeps the ball on the ground, doesn't walk a lot of guys. Like, not my dream there, but I'm looking at uh, one possible arm there as, uh, as Ryu could be a candidate. I'll, uh, I-, I made a short list here. Uh, for people who listen to my podcast, I'm sure this will change throughout the offseason because we have no rumors yet. We really don't know anything yet, but uh, I put together four guys. Um, I put two relievers in there because I think they're going to need the help. Uh, Ronaldo Lopez was one of them. Um, I think I, I I would pretty much guarantee the Orioles put a claim on him when the Angels put him on waivers. Um, he's got really electric stuff out of the back end of the bullpen, and I still don't think he has reached his full potential as a reliever because it wasn't too long ago that he was still a starting pitcher, and I don't really trust the White Sox pitching development or the Angels pitching development to get the most out of Ronaldo Lopez. So I think he could be um, not super cheap, but it could help them. Jacob Junis is a guy with some really, really interesting pitch types and pitch movements. He was kind of a swing man with the Giants the last couple of years after coming over from the Royals. That's a really interesting guy who at worst is a solid middle reliever. And at best you turn into a like Austin Voth catch lightning in a bottle, but for a full season, like 2022 type starter. Um, If you look at the Orioles, how they like to just bring in an innings eater to help out with their young starters, you could argue that the true best true innings eater out there is Kyle Gibson, which is very funny to look at. But everybody on the free agent market is either out of the Orioles price range or has a lot of injury questions or just was like a reliever starter hybrid this year. And you can't count on a lot of innings. So if I don't think they're going to bring back Kyle Gibson, I say they go for the little bit more expensive with a better track record, but worse 2023 option in Lance Lynn. Um, who could definitely eat some innings and is definitely going to give up a lot of homers, but maybe the big wall in left helps him out a little bit because those homers were ridiculous this year. And the last guy is, this is a name I just threw out there because I think he got cheaper over a kind of a struggling second half of the season this year. And Brandon Hyde and Michael Elias love utility guys, so why not try to bring in Whit Merrifield for this team? Um, I know, uh, you know, probably not the, the best uh, clubhouse guy, it seems at times, but, uh, you know, if they really like what he can bring, uh, maybe they bring in Whit Merrifield. So that's my list of four that the Orioles are sure to not sign. There's the prediction. Looking for a fun way to win 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash play100 and use code play100. That's code play100 at prizepicks.com slash play100 for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. For the ones who get it done, the most important part is the one you need now. And the best partner is the one who can deliver. That's why millions of maintenance and repair pros trust Granger because we have professional grade supplies for every industry, even hard to find products. And we have same day pickup and next day delivery on most orders. But most importantly, we have an unwavering commitment to help keep you up and running. Call, clickgranger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. I would love to see Renato Lopez uh, in Oriole, but I did not have him on my list. I'm going to predict that they get into pitching. And the guy that I'm going to throw out there is David Robertson. I think they can get Robertson on a reasonable one-year contract. It gives them another option, a closer, a veteran that can be an anchor at the back end of the bullpen. So I'll put his name out there. And then I think Michael Lorenzen is going to sign with the Orioles. Uh, I think that there was some truth to the rumors that they were in on Lorenzen at the trade deadline. And while he did not pitch well in Philadelphia – you can look at his season last year as a success and feel like he's got at least the ability to be a decent swing man for them. Another compliment to someone like Tyler Wells or Cole Irvin. And because, too, I still don't really know how much they're going to let John Means go next year uh, in terms of full use, that would just give you another option. I do think they're going to trade for a starter, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. But I'm going to throw those two names out. and. One just popped in my head that could be an interesting under-the-radar move. 
Harrison Bader. If they want to get an outfielder who can play some defense, if Aaron Hicks is not back next year, Bader, yeah, he's been on some competitive teams, excellent defender, can't hit. But as long as you have your three incumbent outfielders coming back and you throw in Heston Kirst out of that mix, Bader doesn't have to hit. You can just go out there and play left field, play center field, hold the defense down. I'll throw in a name that's kind of along with Harrison Bader if they don't bring back Hicks. I mean, it might be hard to pry him away from Arizona, but if you go get Tommy Pham for next year, I would be very on board for that to help the Orioles line up. I I think we're going to do most of our acquisitions through trade more than free agency, but I put a, a couple down here, you know, because I, I think they'll – They'll do some stuff through free agency, but I think there could be way more trades than uh, free agent signings. Um, enough preamble. I have Matt Moore as a free agent option, lefty reliever, getting a little older, but I, I've, I don't know. I've, I've liked him for a couple of years now. He's got some good numbers. Uh, I think they might go for a right-handed power hitting guy that can play outfield. So I put Adam Duvall slash Teoscar Hernandez. They might, I mean, especially Hernandez might be a little too pricey for the Orioles, but we'll see. And then I do think they will try to get a starting pitcher, someone on a one-year deal like this year's Jordan Lyles, Kyle Gibson. You know, they've kind of crept slowly up just like with second base free agency. Um, I'm going to say that, where is it? Liam Hendricks. He, nope, that's not what <laughs> who I meant to say. Where is it? I've lost him. Who's the Cubs starting pitcher who has a freaking player option? Uh, Kyle Hendricks. Hendricks. You can yeah, see uh, <laughs> my confusion <laughs> there. I think uh, $16 million club option for the Cubs. I think they will decline that. And maybe the Orioles will sign him to a one-year $10 million deal. Someone like that. So that's my guess. Nice. I do agree with the comment there in the chat that this free agent class kind of stinks. Uh, it's tough to kind of look through this. Um, any, maybe just real quick, any thing thinking about this name uh anyone on board with uh lucas giolito zach former nest guy or no yeah you guys out absolutely him? yeah I, I would be on board with giolito uh pitching for the white Sox and the angels last year had to be awful uh so i think coming to baltimore getting a chance to reset and with an organization that knows what they're doing with uh their pitchers i think he would do well here plus I know he's a good clubhouse guy, so he'd fit right in. I could see that. Yeah, I, I could see Giolito. Um, and they should. what they should do is just sign Giolito and Ronaldo Lopez because those guys have bounced around <laughs> together everywhere from the Nats system to the White Sox to the Angels on waivers. Um, and they have just uh, – didn't they both end up in Cleveland then after waivers this year as well? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, they got to both end up in Baltimore. There's still something there. He did look cooked at the end of last year, but I can imagine after the season he had – he just kind of needs a yeah. reset. I think there's still stuff left in the tank for Giolito, and I think he's a guy where he can get back to his ceiling and won't be super expensive because of the down year he had. Yeah, yeah. What, a, what a long season for him. Um, it's one of those things for me where it's like, if the Orioles sign him, then I like it because it means they they see, they see think they can fix him. They think they can get him back. So, uh, yeah, I would not be opposed to it. All right, who are we trading for this offseason now? Who are your big trade targets? Uh, start with Zach on this one. I think that the Orioles and the Mariners are going to hook up on a deal. And I'll say that the Orioles acquire Bryce Miller from the Mariners. Uh, Connor Norby will go back to Seattle in the deal. The Mariners could use some help at second base. I think that he would be an immediate upgrade for them. And then rounding out the package, I'm trying to think who else could go in that deal. I think you'll see one outfield prospect go in the trade. Um, I'll throw out Judd Fabian's name. And then you're going to see one pitcher go in the deal. Uh, probably a low level guy. Maybe a Davy Cruz goes in it. I'll have uh should I have a specific trade uh, for Bryce Miller as well. Should I just give it now? Go All for right. It. Yeah. I had one of Hayes or, or Ramon Arias. So one major league piece, their choice between those two, one of Connor Norby slash Joey Ortiz their choice um and a lower level guy from the fcl or dsl that's not like one of the big name guys i am just gonna say that you know what let's keep it positive the orioles just send it 
with Brandon Woodruff out for the year next year, the Brewers kind of take a step back. They look around and they say, let's get guys who can help us now. And Corbin Burns, we're not going to resign and we've already burned that bridge. And the Orioles get him for like Kobe Mayo and CNL Perez or something like that. And does he resign with Baltimore? Absolutely not. But the Orioles finally decide to do something that excites the fan base and says, we're trying to win right now. Yeah, I could see okay. the Orioles trading for Burns, but he's only, he's only got that one year left. I don't know if I would give up Mayo for him, but <laughs> you might have to if that's what you want to do. So, yeah, I said, you know what? I I said, let's get positive as well and say, uh, talking about the White Sox and my prediction earlier, uh, we're going back to that. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say that uh, Orioles go out and get Dylan Cease. And I, I typically always have the White Sox involved in like every prediction show we do but this is like a dumpster fire organization. They burn me every time and I refuse to learn my lesson, but I'm going to touch the hot stove again, even after being yelled at over and over and over again, because I'm stubborn. And I'm going to say that Chicago realizes that it ain't happening anytime soon. They should have realized this years ago, but they finally just let's bake it in here. They break finally when the Orioles offer more of a quantity over quality type haul. Like, yeah, we're going to have to give up one maybe even two top 100 guys but when you look at the rest of the package Orioles fans are going to be content with this deal when you look at the plethora of talent we have but I say the White Sox finally cave they get enticed by the near MLB ready talent the Orioles are able to offer uh, maybe a couple DSL flyers as well and um, welcome to Baltimore Dylan Cease and would Jerry oh, Reinsdorf okay. take Kyle Sowers for Dylan Cease straight up <laughs> and ta- throw in Tara and Vavra too <laughs> If Tony LaRusso told him to, he would. So, <laughs> yeah. We got to get to Tony first. That's that's yeah. stage one. We probably should take advantage of the White Sox if <laughs> uh, if they've come down from their Jackson Holiday asking price. But mm-hmm. from a more general sense for the trades this, this offseason, I'm thinking the Orioles will be buying and selling at the same time. So Austin Hayes, Ramon Urias, if you can sell them, in a package where you're buying as well, or just in separate deals, I could see them going. And then I do see a trade with the Mariners in the works, but I, I wonder if the sites are a little bit higher and Logan Gilbert is the uh, the target instead of one of Bryce uh, Miller or Brian Wu. Um, yeah, I think we'll trade for that legit top end starting pitcher and some relievers, maybe a surprising bat or two if uh, if they have to give up. I don't know, more than they're expecting from that infield surplus. If it's not as much of a surplus, then maybe they also bring a a bat in somewhere along the same lines. But I think they're going to be active on the trade trade front this offseason for sure. And I'll uh, go now to this prediction. Your bold Orioles prediction for the offseason. And I'll start with Connor here. I mean, I think trading for Corbin Burns is pretty bold. Um, that would kind of go away from everything the Orioles have done, Um, going after a real player, giving up a real prospect, and getting a guy who only has one year of control left, knowing well that John Angelos ain't shelling out anything close to the money um, that gets him. So I guess I'll just stick with that. I mean, honestly, I think trading for Burns now is bolder than it would have been last offseason because of the one-year control thing. Because at least if the Orioles were trading away a top prospect last offseason, you could sell that well, you know, you have two years of Corbin Burns. Like, that's a pretty good deal. Now I think it's even bolder for the Orioles to make that move. I think the asking price would obviously be lower, but still similar because of how good he is and can be. I think that's bold enough to to make that the bold prediction. That is a very realistic, bold prediction. And I'm going unrealistic, bold, almost fairy tale esque bold here. And I'm going to say, welcome to Baltimore, Blake Snell. It's not going to happen. I know it's wow. not. But I'm going to dream. I'm going to dream a little the team. bit. <laughs> <laughs> that's another prediction uh, at the end of the episode. Okay. I have a couple options here. I'll do my milder bold prediction first, which is that the Orioles do not sign or trade for anyone. Anyone has heard of when it comes to the bullpen and we'll just stick to their waiver claims and, and Danny Coulombs of the world before we knew he was Danny Coulomb. And then I want to say, They'll sign a prospect like Kobe Mayo to an extension before he debuts 10 years, 
hundred million dollars, something like that. Or I was going to say Jackson Holiday, but it's uh, <laughs> it's not going to happen because Scott Boris is his guy. So a non Scott Boris prospect or young player to a an extension, kind of pulling that that move we we saw last decade more than I feel like now the players will debut and then sign extensions. But but one of those. So you're saying the uh, the Tucker Davidson two five ERA season is incoming. Yes, exactly. I'm going to predict, it'll go a little off the wall here, but it is supposed to be bold. I'm going to predict that word does get out that the Orioles made a competitive offer for a free agent who chose to go elsewhere. They were in on someone. They put a legitimate offer together. That player chose not to sign. I kind of lean towards Eduardo Rodriguez, who's going to be uh, part of my next prediction here. It could be him, but I think that something's going to happen where a player will sign somewhere else and then word is going to leak out after the fact. By the way, the Orioles were in on him. They made a competitive offer and he didn't sign. And I predict fans will say, well, close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. All right. What about for the MLB as a whole? Any crazy MLB offseason predictions here, Bob? Hmm. Um, let's say... All right. <laughs> Angels trade Mike Trout. Obviously, Shohei Otani signs elsewhere, and they make the playoffs in 2024. <laughs> of course they will. Nolan Shanuel, all-star season. <laughs> I mean, just Joe Adele, 40 <laughs> homers. It's time. Nice. I'm going to go... Um, I'm pretty sure last year we did a question similar to this, and I said Jacob deGrom signs with the Rangers. And I think this is one that Bob, you actually put a bet on and made like cash on. Uh, I should have done the same, but I did not. Um, although he didn't pitch really that much with him, but um, I don't know how bold this is because I'm going with the Mets here, and they can do and will do whatever the hell they want to, whenever they want to. And I'm going to say that uh, I wanted to say like Juan Soto gets traded to the Mets because I don't think he's going to be in San Diego next year. So they're ready to slash payroll. I'm going to say that uh, the Mets trade make two major trades. At least they, they are the ones that land Corbin Burns um, and someone else. I was going to say they move on from Pete Alonso as well, but I think they're going to be super buyers here because they are the Mets, but at least land Corbin Burns and uh, they actually win next year. I'm going to go Eduardo Rodriguez opts out of his contract with the Tigers, but returns to Detroit. Uh, he had an opportunity to go to L.A. to trade deadline, vetoed that deal. We don't fully know the reasons why, but clearly he likes playing there. And, you know, for the Tigers, you've already got a sunk cost in your payroll in Javier Baez. That contract's not going to work out. But they did take some positive steps forward last year with the guys who you would hope are going to be part of the picture for them long term. For the most part, those were the players that stepped up. And you're not in a very good division. So reasonable. It, it's reasonable to expect that the Tigers bring back Eduardo Rodriguez, make some improvements elsewhere. They could actually be competitive next year. So I think it makes sense for both sides, and you'll see a reunion after Rodriguez opts out. Get the home field advantage every time with Fairfield by Marriott, official hotel partner of the NCAA. Whether you're a student athlete working toward your championship dreams or your team's biggest fan, Fairfield by Marriott has everything you need to get ready for game day. From comfortable guest rooms to complimentary hot breakfast, Fairfield is part of the Marriott Bonvoy portfolio of hotels and official hotel partner of the NCAA. Visit fairfield.marriott.com to book your next game day stay. Early contests build momentum for 2024 contenders seeking the White House. C-SPAN offers unfiltered coverage of events leading into early primaries and caucuses. Get access to speeches and results with the free app. C-SPAN now or watch live on the C-SPAN networks. I say the Diamondbacks off the backs of just narrowly losing in the World Series go out and sign two legitimate free agent starting pitchers. And I think Blake Snell is one of them. And I don't want to say Aaron Nola is the other one because that's a lot of money. But they do a Rangers type offseason where they sign two players, you know, to crazy amounts of money um, for five, six years. And then what what would another one be? Oh, the other one is with Kim Ang gone, and I saw somebody in the comments said something about this, but with Kim Ang gone, uh, the Marlins go into full 
full sell mode again. Like they've done every time they've had success, they just completely tear it down. But the weird part is here, they don't have as many veterans to sell off and they sell off the guys who are, you know, three, four years of team control and they just really go into full rebuild again. All right. Here's one. I want to get Connor's opinion first. When will Oriole Park at Camden Yards lease agreement be finalized? Uh, A long-term one or a one-year extension? The 30 years. The 30-year one will be signed in November of 2024 after the one-year extension is done on December 29th of this year. Thank you. I'm going to go December 13th, which is the last Maryland Board of Public Works meeting of the year. Uh, The Stadium Authority Board and the Board of Public Works will have to vote on the lease to make it final. I'll predict they get it done by December 13th. I'll go with those answers. I got nothing for that one. All right. I'll say <laughs> 2020 <laughs> different answers. <laughs> 20, 2026 when the new owner signs it. All right. I'm going to, um, before we wrap up, there are a couple of listener prompts that I think are interesting. Uh, Tony B wants to know, will the Orioles sign a reclamation project this off season? Yes. hundred percent. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could count Lucas Giolito as a reclamation project somewhat, um, but they will sign someone on a one-year deal. Someone maybe coming off injury. Um, even Ryu kind of fits that mold because he just had Tommy John. I don't know if he's much of a reclamation project, but like they will sign someone to a one-year deal. Luis Severino is someone who I could definitely see them going after. Um, that's right up their wheelhouse to get a guy for one year, you know, ten, twelve million dollars, and say, oh, but he could be this. Yeah, the Orioles should just have a show on HD TV at this point because they love to play fix it and it's worked so far. So yeah, of course they will. Yeah. I, I just threw out the name uh, Frankie Montas looking at him. I went the injury route. Uh, Tyler, Tyler Maley. I think he had Tommy John surgery. He'll probably be like mid season. I think he's more on that John means timeline. So I don't know if the Orioles might go that route, but I think Montas seems Somewhat healthy. I think it was shoulder stuff with him, though. So that is kind of scary. Yeah. But there were some nasty um, injuries there. Yeah. Yeah. So that one, I, I'm hesitant about that one, but I don't know. The velo is still there and everything checks out. Yeah. I'll throw that name out there. Michael Lorenzen's kind of a reclamation project based on the way he finished the season. So yeah, they're, they're going to do that. Uh, I'll go to this one here from Tony. DL Hall is our blank on opening day. Bold prediction, fifth starter, and he sticks in the rotation all year. I said most explosive, most explosive bullpen arm on opening day. I said second most trustworthy left-handed reliever on opening day, but that role enhances as the season goes on. Yes, um, one of two high leverage lefties out of your bullpen. I almost said closer, but. I thought uh, sticking in the rotation would have been more exciting. I think he could have, could have with Felix out, a 2014 Zach Britton type ascension where they put him in the bullpen. They say, oh, this guy's pretty good, but you know we've got Tommy Hunter here as our closer. And then after a month and a half, you're like, wait a minute, Zach Britton's way better than Tommy Hunter. And then all of a sudden, he becomes an incredible closer down the stretch. Not saying that Tommy Hunter and Yin Yer Cano are the same pitcher, but you know. <laughs> Zach, you better not cross out that question because I spent 20 minutes before the show. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, we'll wrap up with that one. I'm going go to I'm go to this one from uh, Ben. Norby, Ortiz, Westberg, where are they to start the 2024 organization? Orioles, Tides, or another organization? Um, I'll start. I'll probably go with the unpopular picks here. I'm going to say Ortiz on the big league roster. Norby is back in AAA, and Westberg is on the move. I could see it, but I'm going to say Ortiz in the majors, Westberg in the majors, Norby in another organization. I'm going to say Westberg's in the bigs. Norby is still in AAA, and I went back and forth between – Ortiz being somewhere and also being in AAA, I don't think it'll be the majors. I do think if they make a big trade, it will be Ortiz. But here's my only thing where I say AAA. If they make the Burns deal, 
I don't see him being involved in that because isn't Jackson Churio a shortstop? Center fielder. Center fielder. Okay. Or outfielder. Maybe there was talk about him playing shortstop. Okay, then maybe I could see Ortiz in that role. But I don't think it's MLB. It's either traded or AAA where Ortiz goes in that trade over to uh, to Milwaukee. I'm going to say that Westbrook is <laughs> Westbrook is still in the organization. I uh, He'll get the bulk of the at-bats at second base next year for the Orioles. Joey Ortiz will start the year in Norfolk, and Connor Norby, I said it earlier, will be traded. We'll wrap up with this question, which actually came in for last week's show, but we tabled it for this week. And Bob has promised that he has something for us here. <laughs> well, I already gave the Bryce Miller slash Brian Wu answer. Um, yep. I will read the question <laughs> first. Sure. So, Mark, uh, previous friend of the show, guest, patron, excellent contributor on the WhatsApp. He asked, one of you assumes the role of the other team and the other two build. Well, OK, it was only me. But mutually agreeable trade proposals for Dylan Cease, Corbin Burns, Edward Cabrera, and Bryce Miller. I gave the Bryce Miller. The easiest one for me was Edward Cabrera. I think Connor Norby for him straight up would be pretty fair as far as, you know, prospect for in between prospect and veteran for Cabrera. I just don't know if he's a starter long term unless they can really figure out the the control there. For Dylan Cease, I said Colton Kowser, and yep, even I said it, Joey Ortiz with maybe, you know, a couple other lower level pieces sprinkled in. And for Corbin Burns, I said Dean Kramer, Connor Norby, and, you know, maybe a piece or two beyond that. But I feel like, you know, it's the Brewers. They are constantly buying and selling at the same time. Kramer has more, you know, he's obviously not as good, not even close, but he at least has team control. And then I went ahead and did Corbin Burns plus Devin Williams. You know, if you want to get get crazy, Dean Kramer again, Jordan Westberg, Ryan Mountcastle, and some other pieces, maybe Dylan Beavers, et cetera, et cetera. I cooked up some stuff over here. Yes. I cooked up a couple of things. Mm-hmm. Um, I have my Kobe Mayo and Cena Perez for Corbin Burns already. Uh, my cease trade was similar, except I added in more because I think the White Sox are going to want a lot here. So I did Joey Ortiz, Colton Kowser, Cade Povich, and a throw in from Rookie Ball. Um, just That's because fair. I think the White Sox sort of want some pitching back, and we don't have a lot to give up, but Cade Povich <laughs> is one of those guys. Um, Edward Cabrera and Bryce Miller, I had no idea because they're kind of like good but unproven starters who have been in the bigs but have a lot of control. So you just never know what a team is going to ask for those guys. So I kind of abstained on those two, but I did have Burns and Cease proposals with me. I like, I would do either of those Cease trades to be honest. Yeah, I, I like those mm-hmm. trades. I'll I already touched on Bryce Miller. Corbin Burns, I do agree with Bob that Dean Kramer would make sense in that move because the Brewers are a team that never fully tears it down. They kind of retool every few years. It's a formula that generally has worked for them. So I would say that if you're gonna do Burns, it would probably be Kramer, Justin Armbruster, Joey Ortiz. Uh, would probably be at the top of the package. And then you throw in a couple of other players. And then for Cease, I actually do think Kyle Stowers would be part of that deal. So I would have him in there probably along with Joey Ortiz again, if I can do that. And then the rest of the package, maybe you see a combination of guys like Dylan Beavers or Judd Fabian. Um, Arm Brewster could pop up in that deal as well. Alex Pham. If the White Sox like with his breakout, uh, Luis De Leon would be part of that deal too. I think the lower level guy you throw in that has a lot of helium. So that's how I see that trade coming together. I do think that the Orioles are going to try hard to not move Cade Povich for Chase McDermott in a trade for a pitcher. Um, because I think that either of those two guys could be near term solutions for the rotation, especially McDermott but I don't know how realistic it's going to be to swing a trade for an ace without one of those two going back in a trade. Yeah. I, I've been back and forth on that since the, all the conversations last trade deadline. If you're giving me a proven starter with at least more than a year of control, I'm down a hundred percent with the one year stuff. We better make sure this roster's right. And you're going all in um, just because 
Povich is, is the guy who he's the wild one. He's a deal hall of this new group here, super high ceiling, but also super low floor. But uh, yeah, interesting uh, trade ideas that I'm sure the trade mill is going to be uh, a hot topic for if you you want the clicks, you want listens, um, start cooking up some more trade ideas. Well, that does it for tonight. So th- Connor, thank you for joining us. And uh, I know a lot of our listeners listen to your show as well, but can you plug, uh, aside from your show that was just released today, uh, what else do you have in the works over at Locked On Orioles? Yes, yeah, so uh, we 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 remain five days a week until basically Thanksgiving. Um, so we continue pushing on with the episodes. Uh, it's player review series is on now. Um, all three of you should be receiving messages from me shortly to uh, come on and review some player seasons from 2023. Um, Tuesday's episode we have Zach Goodman on from the Bat Around. We're talking Austin Hayes and Colton Cowser. And we have an interesting conversation about could the two of them potentially platoon in the outfield for the Orioles next year uh, if they're both in an O's uniform. But it's going to be a lot of that until the World Series ends. And then we kind of dive into the player reviews. Plus, um, of course, you know, what's going to happen in this Orioles offseason. Well, look forward to listening to that. Um, And that does it for tonight's show. For Bob Phelan and Nick Stevens, this is Zach Spedden. You've been listening to On the Birds. Oh, and real quick, before we go, I should mention... We are now on TikTok. So in addition to X, Facebook, and Instagram, you can follow us on TikTok. Bob uh, kind of dropped that surprise a few days ago. So, Bob, what are we doing on TikTok? That is a good question. <laughs> I have to figure out how to use it, and I'll do, I'm will do. i going to do something with it. I'm going to do something with it. I have some ideas. I don't know if I can pull them off, but it should be fun trying. Well, tune in later this week. Bob's going to have a series of dance moves and dad jokes <laughs> on, on our TikTok account. Uh, we'll be back next week at our regular time. In the meantime, check us out on social media. For Bob Phelan and Nick Stevens, this is Zach Spedden. You've been listening to On The Verge. What's the easiest choice you can make? Window instead of middle seat? Picking a vendor who sends a great gift basket? Outsourcing business tasks you hate? What about selling with Shopify? Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage, Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash try. Go to shopify.com slash try now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash try. Overdraft fees are just the worst. Get up to 200 in fee-free overdraft with the Chime checking account. Sign up today at Chime.com slash Goals24. Banking services and debit card provided by Bancorp Bank NA or Stride Bank NA, members FDIC. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply.